Because Britain is small in size and great in industry, because her 50 million people inhabit only 90,000 square miles and use almost every acre, because the nation is forever on the move, the railways of Britain are the busiest in the world. A railway system such as ours can never be complete. It must always be renewing itself part by part like a living thing, altering even the nature of its energy. In the planning room, the change to electricity is recorded on a picture of its own progress. As electrification grows on the track outside, so in symbols it grows here. The blue is complete, the brown is in progress, the white will soon begin. While the new work goes on, so must the old. The business of the railways cannot be delayed and while the new stations are built, there are difficulties for the passengers today so that things will be easier tomorrow. At Macclesfield, two stations are demolished and one is being built. And the transition must be organized without interruption to traffic. In Manchester is the first major terminus to be wholly reconstructed since the war. Piccadilly Station, the 20th century successor to the 100-year-old London Road, now swept away. Up-to-date amenities for the passengers, smoother operation for the traffic, and a nine-storey office block. The vast new bridge alone is an enormous piece of engineering a concrete construction based on the most delicate of foundations. For on each of these columns is carried many thousand tons, balanced on a bearing. Again in Manchester, Oxford Road is a major aspect of railways modernization, part of its aesthetic revolution, enlisting the adventurous new techniques of architecture and the stimulating materials of today to open up floor space and let in the light. Yeah. At Crewe, the whole new structure gives an air of competence and vigour, since the proposition is that what looks well is no less likely to work well. The primary business of buying a ticket is now streamlined. It is printed as it is issued by a machine that holds 1,200 plates of type. The back rooms are invaded by electronics and the computer's mechanical brain devours the mathematics of accountancy. This is the super clerk of Paddington, which feeds on figures and is nourished by numbers and incidentally saves 9,400 pounds a year. The business of goods handling, too, is beginning to be tackled by another device with a mind of its own, the robotug, the driverless truck. It knows its way around this depot at Wolverhampton, following the course of a single buried wire half an inch below the surface. It turns its own corners on its preset path, watching for obstacles, entirely automatically. Behind the scenes, there is more invasion by science and automation. In the new British Railways laboratories, on the site of what was once the Alexandra Palace station at Muswell Hill, is the spectrograph, which marries electronics and chemistry in the interests of research. Here, diesel oils are analysed. The spectrograph detects metal deposits finds its own evidence of bearing wear or corrosion, 
making its own immediate calculations as part of the great advancing drive of the railways. The results of many such calculations and researches are already being applied here at Perth's new marshalling yard, where a highly mechanised system of retarders will handle all the traffic of this area in Scotland. They will be helped by devices to compute the wind, the weight, the distance to be travelled, all the many factors that can now be automatically accounted electronically, so that the wagons leave the retarder at precisely the right speed. These great yards are the nerve centres of the network of steel that covers the country. Between Stockton and Middlesbrough, in the countryside where the railway was born, a stretch of empty land known as the wilderness becomes a modern marshalling yard, the Newport Yard. Another at Lamesley must be fashioned out of the land itself. But here they need more than the soil provides. So the earth movers and bulldozers are handling earth brought 20 miles from a cutting at Corbridge, where the engineers are shifting a hillside hundreds of tons at a time. For the 125 year old tunnel has come to the end of its days and a cutting can take its place. More speed demands more elbow room. At Folkestone, two extra lines will be needed in 1962 to keep the many electric services and the boat trains from impeding each other. And while the work goes on, so must the traffic. Somehow, today and tomorrow must march together. Their progress speeded by the new flyovers, such as this one at Bletchley, so that the trains leapfrog the crossroads, over each other, under each other, but always out of each other's way. At the most intricate centre of the web at Barking, a three-dimensional crossing speeds the daily tidal flow of city workers and separates them from heavy industrial traffic. Freight is the lifeblood of the railways, and the bulk load trains have given them a new pulse beat. Each night, more than a thousand fast freight trains leave for distant destinations. The Lee Valley Enterprise starts off as a locomotive and a brake van, and wending its way along the valley, it grows and multiplies, stopping for trucks as it goes along. By the time it leaves Broxbourne, it is a complete train, guaranteeing next morning deliveries all over the Midlands and the North. Freight trains are specialists, like the Condor between London and Glasgow. The iron ore trains from the Tyne to Consett Steelworks. The nightly oil train from Thameshaven. the frozen food trains with their endless rush hour from East Anglia. The limestone train at Peak Forest in Derbyshire. The car train at Bonnybridge, for economy using old converted passenger bogies. transport of cement is simplified now by the press flow system for unloading this difficult material. The road railer makes the best of both worlds. An 11 ton vehicle with a versatile rear undercarriage that turns it in 90 seconds from a lorry to a wagon with flange steel rims replacing rubber tires. On the road, it is a normal semi-trailer. On the rails, it becomes a train. And as a means of freight delivery, it has the flexibility of a lorry that can drive from door to door, 
avoiding the congested trunk roads. Every year, more and more perishable goods come by train ferry from the continent, and the fruit and food and flowers must be swiftly in the markets. For this was made the depot at Hither Green. If it looks huge from here, then look again. The emphasis is on better storage, bigger depots. Here at Leeds arises another, still at the stage where the Spider-Men on the construction walk the girders like acrobats. This central goods depot in Hull has 70,000 square feet of modernity. For speed in handling, there are conveyors to take the goods the entire length of the shed. For efficiency, the scene is lit, the daylight is brought in. For brightness means competence as well as comfort. In such a place, a man can see what he's doing. And now a nerve center. In Middlesbrough is Zetland House, headquarters of the traffic manager, the strategic base of this area. A wholly new concentration holding the most modern control room of its kind, with 900 telephone circuits to 190 signal boxes and depots over the east coast, handling up to 1,200 trains. Zetland House itself is new, built boldly on columns over the station forecourt, the latest expression of railway progress. There are other things to do with trains besides make them go. The great mechanical brushes of the carriage cleaning unit can handle 200 mainline coaches every day. This is the launderette of the permanent way spraying the train with detergent, rubbing it in and rubbing it off, eliminating the dirt of many journeys with a massage and a man-sized rinse. Inside, it is back to the human hand and the vacuum cleaner, since only personal care can handle the contribution of rubbish that is an endless public legacy. Cleanliness and civilization is for more than trains. It is now part of the railway man's life. Human amenities must make the same progress for men as technology does for machines. This is a huge advance on the old days of making do, of looking after yourself, and empty evenings between turns of duty. At the new hostels, a man can relax. A man can live like a social creature among his fellow men. Here he can shed the grime of the working day with his working clothes and have a place of his own. At Ilford Training School, a thousand men a year can be adapted to the new techniques, learning new skills for new machines, keeping pace themselves with the swift advances of the industry. converting their craft from old to new, moving forward from the age of steam. One of the first depots in the country, built specially for the maintenance of mainline diesel locos, is to be found at Finsbury Park. 
a broad glass structure with six roads and two level maintenance, which can handle up to 150 of this kind of engine. What is installed must be maintained, supervised and studied. The gondola car is a mobile laboratory to check on the electrified lines. It is equipped with pantograph and instruments to test and inspect the overhead wiring, its variation in height and wear and endurance. At the Doncaster Loco Works, they no longer build steam engines, but the great E3057, a 25,000 volt locomotive, the showpiece motive power of today, now built by British Railways for British Railways. This machine will take over where the steam engine leaves off. new skills and judgment come into their own. The signal box of today is no longer a place of long imposing levers and remote dramatic bells, but of power operated transistorized devices, both intricate and organized, needing a keen mind to understand them and to control them. One man may preside over 30 miles of track with a push button preparing the calculated passage of unseen trains on unseen tracks, without conflict or confusion or delay. From the land to the water, the permanent way to the shifting sea. Down the slip at Cowes slides a new ship for the Channel Islands service, the Sarnia, called by the old Roman name for the Isle of Guernsey. She and her sister ship, the Caesarea, will be the biggest ever built for the Channel Islands route. For the passengers, new convivial equipment with which a train seeks to resemble a mobile hotel. The new griddle car is a very urbane institution, ready to provide all the amenities of decent hospitality at a mile and a half a minute. At the beginning of railway's history is Stevenson's rocket. Today it's the blue pullman, the last word in gracious riding. One goes from Manchester to London, this one from Brunel's Paddington to Bristol, at a smooth and silent 90 miles an hour and drawing room comfort. So every month, every week, comes something new. It may be a detail like the continental type level crossing at Ware, with electric gates and flashing lights. Or it may be the new face of an old tradition. And always behind the shop window, is the solid foundation of the whole enterprise, the men. The men who are moving ahead in step with the advancing speed of the craft they serve. Mm -hmm.